May is given a context within which she can begin to deal with her ontological crisis as she hangs out with Greg and Bea. Bea presents a potential new relational and foundational ontology, whilst Greg shows the failures of May's old lifestyle. May is then left to synthesize the two viewpoints. In the end, May manages to reform her relationships with those around her, replanting meaning where it had been lost, and while her ontological crisis is not dealt with, she sets herself on a path towards resolution. The first thing that is to be considered is the reforms inherent in May's relationships. The changes are referred to as reforms because every relationship that May fosters throughout the game, especially the most central relationships, all existed prior to the game. There is no relational creation, only alteration to old friendships. The reforms that are seen in May's relationships follow a pattern of moving from relationships that are intercentric to those that are intracentric. To understand these terms, one must first consider relationships as relative to a particular agent. For an intercentric relationship, the others, or those entities that are not the agent, are defined as being for the agent. It is a self-centered system. On the other hand, an intracentric relationship is a relationship with others. The agent considers the others as agents with ends of their own. Where the intercentric relationship could be considered to be parasitic, the intracentric is symbiotic. May expresses the intercentric nature of her initial relationships in two key areas. The first is how she framed her crisis, as she stated that nothing was there for me anymore. In the first episode, we discussed how this was a breakdown of May's relational meaning. This phrase not only shows that there was a breakdown, but also the state of the system prior to the crisis. With the world prior to her crisis being one where other entities existed for May, May is necessarily centering the others in the world around herself. The implications of her intercentric life can be seen in the other indication of this lifestyle, that being that May does not acknowledge the history of those around her. One example of this is seen when May forgets that Bea's mother died. May tries to grasp for her old relational bond with Bea in order to make her feel better after having messed up at the party. This was her attempt to use Bea for her ends of good feelings. However, by neither thoroughly addressing the harm done to Bea, and also disregarding Bea's history, May destroyed any chance of forming a strong relational bond. The intercentric nature of May's relationships is turned towards being intracentric through the endings of both Bea and Greg's storylines, and her interactions with her mother. Both Bea and Greg's storylines end with a lengthy discussion between May and the friend in question. In both discussions, May is coming to terms with the fact that the other character has ends of their own separate from herself. For Bea, this is shown when May finally accepts that she does not have the right to wantonly intrude into Bea's life. Her apology for having ruined the party and subsequent promise to act better at the next one shows that May is considering Bea's goals in the party. In the case of Greg, May accepts that he does not exist exclusively to perpetuate their old lifestyle. She has to respect his goals in order to maintain their relationship. There is a paradigm shift in May's relationship with her mother when they go to Jenny's field. This entire scene focuses on relational change. In the beginning of the scene, May's mother talks about her old friends going up to the field, and May states that I'm not used to you using any other we's. The standard we that May is conceptualizing is May and her mother. By not generally considering any other we's, May is conceptualizing her mother as having existed in her current relational state for her entire life. In other words, ignoring her history. May's mother appears to do two things by bringing May to the field. The first is to show May a history of hers that is separate from May. She does this by expressing the other we that was previously discussed, and also by having May climb the smokestack. When May is looking over the valley from the stack, her mother remarks that, I remember I couldn't tell if being up there made everything feel bigger or smaller. This statement is May's mother's attempt to create a direct link between her younger self and May. On the one hand, there is a physical metaphor of May's mother having been where May is now, as they both stood on top of the smokestack with the same perspective. 
On the other hand, there is a psychological connection as May's mother presents herself as having been as mystified by the world as May is now. Neither May nor her mother could make heads or tails of a world from that height. The most important realization of May's came about as her mother joked about having to keep her, and May responds, I couldn't see what your expression was when you said that. Do you need to? No. By May saying that she could not see her mother's expression, she is saying that without clear indication she could not determine her mother's intentions. This is important in that her mother is joking about removing May from her life, a thing that should be immediately taken as a jest if made between mother and daughter. After all, while their relationship is tense, it is not that dysfunctional. May's mother deals with the topic head on, asking May if she really believed that there was a chance that her mother would want her gone. By taking such a forward approach to the matter, May's mother forces her to seriously consider how she views their relationship. May's response of no shows that she has consciously accepted that her mother does not hold ill will towards her. By both considering her mother's history and rethinking her mother's relationship, May reshapes the relationship with her mother into an intracentric conception. While May's relationships are in a healthier condition, her ontological crisis remains an issue for her. After May states that she wants to leave the town to spend time with either Greg or Bea, depending on the player's choices, both of them respond by stating that, I thought you couldn't leave home because of your issue. The issue in question is the ontological crisis. The other issue that could be being discussed is May's injury, but the fact that May appears to be perfectly healthy in the last scene, and the delicacy with which her friend dances around the issue, indicates that it is not the injury being discussed. Greg and Bea are both indicating that May's crisis is still a problem, even after having gone through so much. On top of that, May does not deny that there is an issue, and instead seems to accept it. So, while the ontological crisis still exists, it has been somewhat dealt with. May has chosen to leave behind the ideology that led her back to Possum Springs, that being that she can regain meaning from the past. Greg's storyline shows one aspect of May needing to abandon an old life. However, the clearest indication that she has abandoned this ideology is her standoff against the death cult. The cult's main goal was to maintain their concept of Possum Springs by eradicating any aspect of the town that did not fit their conception. In essence, they were trying to cling to an old way of life by any means necessary. The destruction of the cult is also a tacit rejection of it, thereby also being a rejection of clinging onto old, dead ideologies. What is just as telling is that in May's final dialogue, she states that I want us all to get free of it, and that she believes there's a way to escape. What must be identified to understand these statements is what it is. It is the thing that is standing between each of them and a good life. For Bea, it is her unswerving devotion to duty. For Greg, it is the temptation of his old lifestyle. And for May, her ontological crisis. What is most important about this statement is that May is, for the first time, presenting a hope of fixing her crisis. May has finally ended her search for meaning in lost ontologies, and at the same time has expressed a newfound hope that the crisis will eventually be resolved. This hope is not entirely unfounded either, as the first signs of healing can already be seen. The relational changes that we have already discussed are a sign of May fostering strong relational ontologies with those around her. From May's growing relations, she is beginning to create new meaning in the world around her. Consider that regardless of who she hangs out with, May states that her friend is home enough for her. Home prior to this moment was Possum Springs. As Possum Springs was the only place that May could find a semblance of meaning in her world, the concept of home is directly linked with an ontology that can, in the very least, ground May. By having her friend be home, May has formed a new ontological base in either Greg or Bea. She can understand the world as being ontologically grounded around them. While this is not an independent ontology like May would have had prior to her crisis, it shows May's first steps towards reshaping the world around her to a new ontology. 
Night in the Woods is a fully realized dialogue about the loss of meaning in one's world. The focus of the story was not on the creation of new meaning, but on overcoming the dread of having every point of reference wrest from one's world. There is no doubt that Night in the Woods succeeded at conveying this crisis convincingly. Certainly there are many other aspects of this game to examine as it touches upon politics, religion, and the nature of relationships in far more depth than this single argument could consider. Perhaps we will examine such topics in the future. Regardless, thanks for watching and, as always, enjoy the rest of your day.